सो गुड मॉर्निंग एक्सप्रेंस Good morning, good morning, aspirants. Yesterday we spoke about uh, Chalcolithic culture in India. Chalcolithic, as I said uh, before, what we had is Stone Age. Later, what we will have is Bronze Age, or we can say this is contemporary also. We are talking about cultures where the copper dominance is there. Then we will have Iron Age. So, if you want to see this. This is the chronology. I would like to go back to Chalcolithic as I have completed Chalcolithic and industrial civilization also. So sometimes timelines timelines will be established in repetitions because of which I am taking up this particular timeline. First one. <coughs> From Chalcolithic, I'll start again. Chalcolithic period of India. So you can clearly see that by the end of Neolithic period, a full-fledged civilization was developed in Indus and Saraswati valleys. So when we speak about Indus and Saraswati valleys in northern part of India. a completely different kind of culture known as chalcolithic culture was developed in central indian and deccan region they however never reached to the level of urbanization in spite they were using metal they were contemporary of harappan culture but some were of harappan age so remember after stone age one side in northern india which is dominating indus and saraswati region indus valley civilization and saraswati civilization is dominating with bronze right we spoke about copper tin alloys and bronze is dominating whereas in the dakkan part and the southern part and the central india what is there chalcolithic although not all the timelines are contemporary you can understand some is pre uh, 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 some timelines are before you know the start of chalcolithic age if you try to see in few areas it is before indus valley civilization and some are contemporary this is what you need to remember about chalcolithic a completely different type of culture that is chalcolithic culture where the dominance is of copper although they also came up with the different implements but the they couldn't never uh, they couldn't reach to the level of urbanization which we saw in indus valley civilization so majorly we have ahar culture kayata culture malwa culture savalda culture jarve prabhas and rangapur these are the different cultures we have in chalcolithic period clearly see in this particular picture that uh, one side you have one side you have harappan culture which is being dominated in indus and saraswati region all this you can see the other one you have ahar culture kayata culture jorve culture ahar culture kayata culture jorve culture so the central dakkan and southern parts we are calling it as chalcolithic culture whereas harappan and uh, other cultures are dominating in the northern part this is what you need to keep in mind when you talk about the timelines clearly so as i said ahar culture kayata culture malwa culture savalda culture jorve culture prabhas culture and rangapur culture if you can see most of them are contemporary to the indus valley civilization and saraswati civilization what are the common features of this particular culture 
after stone age what are the common features of this particular culture the people of chalcolithic culture used unique painted earthenware usually black on red so this is a painted earthenware the pottery is red pottery and they have used painting black painting on redware so pot will tell you many things handmade pot wheel wheel pot or hot pot is also telling about agriculture if there is any cultivation then to store the grains we have this particular parts right pot they use specialized blade and flake industry this is little advanced industry when compared to the stone age because these are using metals unlike the stone age where we only used stone bone implements and similarly uh, tooth likewise industry of siliceous material such as chalcedony and chert so even in paleolithic age i spoke about the types of stone example quartz quartzite right chert even then they are used however the use of copper and bronze tools also evidenced for a limited scale so as a chalcolithic age copper usage is good and as a contemporary period indus valley civilization there are bone uh, bronze proofs also available but uh, we can clearly see that bronze is little alien to these cultures <coughs> the economy is largely based on subsistence agriculture now what we have is surplus agriculture then what we had is subsistence agriculture what is required for that particular uh, family they used to make that there is nothing uh, there is no concept of market and all stock raising hunting and fishing they never left the stock raising you can see this domestication i spoke about the domestication hunting and fishing painted pottery is the most distinguished feature of chalcolithic cultures as i said black on red is the distinguished feature the kayata culture is also distinguished by red slipped ware painted with designs of chocolate color a red painted buff ware a combed ware bearing incised patterns so if you can see that although you don't have to focus on the specificity but remember red pot ware and black or chocolate color paints are coming into picture then we have ahar culture ahar culture is of unique black and red ware decorated with white designs so different uh, permutations and combinations if you take prabhas and rangapur wares both were derived from harappan cultures and are lustrous red ware because of their glossy surface so whenever you see prabhas and rangapur these are having glossy surfaces like indus valley civilization more polished more polished pottery pottery is talking about technology evolution of pottery is understanding technology okay so if you see malwa malwa ware in and around malwa plateau it is little coarse in texture coarse in fabric but has a thick buff surface over which designs were made either of red or black jorve ware painted black on red so painted black on red painted white on red painted uh, uh black on red painted chocolate on red these are the different types in chalcolithic culture which is having matte surface treated with a particular wash so matte surface you must be knowing what is matte surface now so most of the times pottery is why this pottery is used this pottery is pottery is used on dishes on stand similarly spouted vases so we can see that decorative purposes and also storage purposes stemmed cups right and pedestal bowls big storage jars spouted basins and bowls so if you can see for domestic utilization as well as for using it as vases this pottery is used depending upon the purpose and the designs were there although we can't specifically go into every chalcolithic culture and remember everything but remember red pot and design favorite somewhere it is black somewhere it is white somewhere it is having matte finish somewhere it is having glossy finish that is what you need to remember the centers of chalcolithic culture flourished in semi arid regions where rajasthan madhya pradesh gujarat and maharashtra these are the regions as i said central and south india 
is where it has dwelled. The settlements of Kayata were mostly located in Chambal Valley, Chambal River, in tributaries in uh, Mahara, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Kayata. They were only few in number, relatively small in size and biggest may not be over 2 hectares. So you can see the settlements are of very small and very small settlements and not over 2 hectares. The settlements of Ahar culture was larger in comparison to Kayata culture. When you compare to Kayata culture, Ahar culture settlements are large. Excavations revealed that you can see again where is Kayata culture, where is you can see here Kayata culture here and Jorway culture, Ahar culture. The settlements of our culture were larger in comparison to Kayata culture. As I said, Kayata culture, which is in and around Madhya Pradesh, which is in, around, in and around the Chambal Valley, is very small. Excavations revealed that they used stone, mud bricks, and mud for construction of houses and other structures. So they are using mud, but you can, you can see Indus Valley civilization where people used burnt bricks. So Balthal settlement was fortified settlement. The settlements of Mal Malwa culture, Malwa Plateau, in and around Malwa Plateau, are mostly located in the Narmada and its tributaries. So, if you can see, all the civilizations are dwelling in and around a river valley. Three best known settlements of Malwa culture are Navdatoli, Iran, and Nagada. So, these are the different uh, settlements in and around Malwa. Navdatoli was one of the largest uh, uh, charcoal lithic site, as I said settlements in the country, uh, when you compare Kayata was very small, it was spread in almost 10 hectares, some of these sites were fortified, Iran had a fortification wall with a moat, Nagada has a bastion of mud bricks, mud bricks but burnt bricks used in Indus Valley civilization, little better technology when compared to the contemporaries, very few not more than half dozen settlements of Prabhas culture was known, so you can see that very less settlements and similarly Rangapur located mostly in Gelo and Columbar rivers in Gujarat. So, Rangapur is completely in Gujarat. And uh, more than 200 settlements of uh, Zorve are known. Greater number of these settlements are found in Maharashtra. So, Zorve, Rangapur, these are the settlements where we have between Maharashtra, Jharkhand, uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat. So, Junagadh region. First, we are trying to understand the settlements clearly. The best known settlements for uh, Jorve culture are Prakash, Daimavad, Inamgao, was the largest one of the measured in 20 hectares. 20 hectare settlements, right? The houses of Chalcolithic period were rectangular and circular. If you see, the houses are rectangular and circular, but the features of Indus Valley civilization are little bit different when compared to this. So, these are primitive housing. They were made of mud wattle and though the circular houses were mostly in cluster. So, we can understand that rectangular may be of people with power or circular might be mass. So, unlike Indus Valley civilization, the roofs of this particular culture, the houses were made of straw which were supported by bamboo and wooden rafters. As I said, floors were made by rammed clay. So, Whereas they cultivated both karif and rabi crops, rabi in rotation and also raised cattle with it. Once they domesticated rice, similarly they domesticated animal husbandry also. They cultivated wheat and barley in Malwa region. Rice is also cultivated in Inamgao. The evidence of rice is available in Inamgao and Ahar region. So, rice, barley, wheat, these are the different cultures they have done, right, cultivated. They also cultivated jowar, bajra, kult, ragi, green peas, lentil, green, black grams, which means that they also have idea not only about coarse grains, but also about so uh, millets and other pulses. Largely, the Chalcolithic cultures flourished in the black cotton soil region, as I said, Rangapur, as I said about uh, other cultures, which are uh, mostly in and around Gujarat and Maharashtra. So, you can see black cotton soil zone now which is famous for cotton cultivation, 
this reflects ecological adoption by chalcolithic people in developing system of dry so corn even now even you go to gujarat these are important millets are important coarse grains are important pulses are important so they need they need to dependent on moisture retentive soils based on the available technology knowledge and means so these are the different crops they have cultivated this is how they survived rice wheat barley then coming back the chalcolithic communities traded and exchanged materials with other contemporary communities so you can see indus valley civilization saraswati culture all are contemporary civilizations the large settlement serves as the major centers for trade and exchange normally in modern areas the way we have urban areas the large settlements are source of trade and commerce which are example gulen nagada navdatoli iran prabhas rangapur prakash daimabad inamgaon so these are the regions where more large settlements were there and there is a scope for trade and commerce that is how we reconstruct the history the ahar people settled close to source of the copper which used to supply copper tools objects to other contemporary communities like malwa and gujarat so you can see that the source of mine is somewhere in ahar culture they settled near ahar culture they mined it and they have supplied to the contemporaries identical marks embedded on most of the copper axes found in malwa which means that might be coming from the same iron smith or smiths right jorway and prabhas cultures might be indicate that it may be a trademark of smiths who made them so when you see the marks are same you can identify that it is coming from one single source so it is traded that conch shells for bangles conch shell for bangles were traded from saurashtra coast to coast to various chalcolithic region so the conch shells which were collected from saurashtra and other coastal areas right they have been supplied to other uh, contemporary chalcolithic cultures gold and ivory come to jorway people from tekkal kota in karnataka normally just remember kgf movie you can remember gold gold mines so tekkal kota in karnataka is the source of this particular precious and semi precious metals and stones right and they traded with with rajpipla in gujarat so this is one of the important region even when you talk about uh, uh, diamonds or other precious stones these are from krishna godavari belt krishna tungabhadra belt krishna godavari belt is where most of the precious stones were found before <coughs> so inamgao pottery has been found at several sites located far away this shows that jarvai people used to trade even the pottery at distant places so trade and commerce is there in the contemporary civilizations which is clearly established by these facts that let us consider copper tools let us consider these pottery let us consider these conch shells these are telling us the source and the destination wheeled bullock carts were used for long distance trade so when wheeled bullock carts are being used you can understand the rural trend besides the river transport the drawings of wheeled bullock carts have been found on parts right and parts also there were designs designs of society and life so you can clearly see such design and when we come to religious beliefs what are those religious beliefs of this particular culture religion was an important aspect that interlinked all centers of chalcolithic culture as i said we let it be malwa let it be rangapur let it be ahar culture let it be inamgaon let it be any other city or any other area most of that are connected by religion the people of these worshiped mother goddess and bull these are the uh, mother goddess is being worshiped in this particular culture chalcolithic culture contemporarily in all those cultures malwa the bull cult seems to have been predominating during ahar period right so a large number of both uh, the naturalist as well as stylist lingas have been found from most of the sites so which we can say rudra or shiva the realistic or naturalistic ones may have served as a ritual offerings the mother goddess is depicted on huge storage jar of malwa culture and aplik design 
she is surrounded by a woman on the right crocodile on the left by the side of which is represented by a shrine so you can see the cultures the religion the trade everything is being presented on pottery that is the reason why pottery is very important that technology is a window for us for understanding of that societies when you see a painting when you see a particular culture that is a window for you to understand that particular culture in a painted design on a pot a deity is shown with a disheveled hair like shiva if you see the loosened hair right recalling rudra of later period later period in veda veda so you speak about rudra or shiva the same person is being depicted here a painting on jar from daimabad portrait a deity surrounded by animals birds such as tigers and peacock the same culture is being continued even now you can understand most of the times these gods or these deities have those vehicles like vishnu having garuda as vehicle like subramanya is having peacock as vehicle like uh, ganapati is having rat as a vehicle durga the lion likewise vehicles you know we can call it as maybe maybe that is representing the domestication of those animals maybe that is representing that uh, our ecological or environmental or biodiversitical sense or inclusive inclusivity not just with human beings but also with other animals it is similar with shiva pashupati which found in the seal of mohenjadaro you see in mohenjadaro a person in meditative pose we call it as pashupati seal so pashu plus pati animals animal so those person who take care of this particular animals you can say so people used to pray him maybe to protect the assets they have those were animals right domesticated animals two figurines belonging to late jorvay culture found in inamgaon have been identified as proto ganesh now mother goddess rudra pashupati proto ganesh these are the these are the features of religion in this particular time period headless figurines were found in inamgaon which is being linked with the uh, visra of mahabharata a large number of fire altars so normally when we come to maha janpadas there are many uh, yajnas they have done ashwamedha rajasuya likewise vajpaya likewise if they have done any any uh, if they have used they must have used fire altars this fire altars is clearly telling you about the spiritual and religious aspects of life right this is a very widespread phenomenon and the fire altars on even now fire altars are important in most of the religions fire is considered as a element of purity right the people of chalcolithic had a belief in life after death which indicated how it is indicated if you see the pottery in the burial parts you can found uh, uh, malwa and jarwa people based on this we speak this speak uh, for us about rebirth and reincarnation right the chalcolithic cultures grown during 3000 to 2000 bc so you can see approximately 3000 to 2000 bc is the timeline where we are talking about chalcolithic but if you remember 6 lakhs to 2000 is the stone age which means you have a contemporary stone age you have contemporary bronze age also so don't confuse that this will end and that will come excavation shows that large number of settlements like kayata prabha sahar balatkal sorry balatal prakash nevasa are deserted due to decline in rainfall which may which must have made that agriculture difficult and they might had they might have a uh, reoccupied after 4 or 6 centuries these places might have been reoccupied after 4 or 6 centuries so as usual technology is important what kind of technology was available in that particular time period so technology was available to farmers that is the reason why i am saying farmers agriculture is technology when people moved out of uh, caves and came to these particular valleys they started agriculture they started settled form of life so they need technology so they made considerable progress in both ceramic which means pottery and using ceramic industry polished ware is also available and metal technology so uh, they used painted pottery which was well made and well fired in the kiln brick kiln metal tools were mostly 
made from the copper obtained from K3 of Rajasthan mines. And I also spoke about uh, our cultures there, right? Our culture, Marwa culture, and uh, how they have utilized these implements. We have spoken about it, right? The tools which they have used are axes, chisels, bangles, baits, hooks. So not only for the survival, but also they used it for the decorative purpose, maybe for spiritual or decorative purposes. Beads, even now people wear rings, even now people wear bracelets, even now people wear chains for spiritual purposes. A gold ornament is also found in Jorve culture, which was extremely rare, an ear ornament found in Prabhas culture. So we cannot generally identify this was available, but we can clearly say, and we have said that gold came from Karnataka. So we spoke about Karnataka. Next one, crucibles and pairs of tongs of copper found in Inamgao. Inamgao is where we found the rice also. Illustrate the working of goldsmiths. Chalcedony drills were used for perforating beads of semi-precious stones. So lime was prepared out of kankar, kankar lime was prepared which was used as a paste to paint houses and uh, yeah even now that practice is there <coughs> so you can see here tekkal kota i spoke about gold there were examples of jarway uh, there were uh, examples of gold in jarway they might have uh, derived this gold from tekkal kota in karnataka gold and ivory come to jarway people from tekkal kota So that's about uh, technology and the copper hoard culture, this is the culture which, ma which made it a uh, uh, chalcolithic culture. A copper harpoon was discovered in Bitur and Kanpur district in 1822. Since then nearly a thousand copper objects has been found in almost 90 localities in various parts. That is the reason why we are calling it as a chalcolithic age and we are calling it in central India and southern Deccan part. right? Mostly copper objects have been found in hoards, piles of copper objects found, therefore they are known as copper hoard, right. The large reserve was found in Gugaria of Madhya Pradesh. It comprised 422 pieces of copper objects, one or two thin sheets of silver. So you can see the main objects were various kinds of cells, harpoon, antenna swords, rings and anthropomorphs. Harpoons, antenna swords and anthropomorphs are confined to Uttar Pradesh. Whereas the other ones, cells, rings and all are confined to Rajasthan, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, Orissa, West Bengal, etc. The scientific analysis on these objects clearly says that these are made of pure copper, although very insignificant quantities of alloys have been noticed in some, maybe because of uh, uh, adult maybe because of that mixing without knowing without the knowledge of that particular person because the alloy culture starts with Indus Valley the contemporary we don't uh, agree here nothing established clearly they have used copper here copper is mixed with tin and they have used bronze there Indus Valley the K3 copper mines are also found you know K3 copper mines and hilly regions of Almora district Uttar Pradesh Almora district is in Uttar Pradesh and K3 mines is in Rajasthan so this is where uh, more sources of uh, copper came from, right? A source of copper, I said, sources of gold, we spoke just, and sources of uh, those conch shells also we spoke, which are from Junagadh region, Saurashtra. So what are anthropomorphs? Anthropomorphs are uh, maybe objects of worship, uh, maybe a few kilos. OCP culture. The culture flourished in upper Gangetic plains, which uniquely identified by the use of pottery with bright red slip and painted in black. This is known as OCP culture, simply 
ओसीपी कल्चर ऑक्रिक कलर्ड पॉटरी कल्चर सो दिस इज आल्सो ए कॉन्टेम्पररी टू द लेटर हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन मेच्योर हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन द कल्चर हैज बीन फाउंड ऑल ओवर अपर गैंजेटिक प्लेन्स सो यू कैन सी हियर अपर गैंजेटिक प्लेन्स the map is focusing on upper gangetic plains where ocp culture dwelt as i said lal killa hastinapur in and around delhi during the course of excavation in the region of the sites yielding the pottery have suffered from existing extensive floods because it is from a uh, river valley it must have suffered floods and we have the traces of it is suggested by many scholars that the entire upper gangetic plains were some length of time submerged under water the people of ocp culture used copper tools and cultivated rice barley gram and kasheri so although they are uh, having a different kind of pottery technology what is the tools which they used copper only ocp cultures have many shapes identical with harappan ware which gives uh, an idea for us that these are contemporaries so most of the copper hoards found with ocp culture makes us believe that this is from chalcolithic time period in the region of ganga yamuna dob almost copper hoards have been found along the deposits of ocp which reflects that copper hoards are associated with ocp people in dob but their cultural association in bihar bengal and orissa is not clear so contemporaries are not established but the identification of these objects in this excavations is clearly establishing the fact these are from chalcolithic so some of the copper hoard types mainly celts have been associated with the chalcolithic people also so you can see the tools just to remember the kind of uh, uh, visa pottery and we are also seeing the usage of metals right this is how we wind up chalcolithic age once again we have completed that so clearly the age of copper and the alloys of copper but alloys of copper were less used as we spoke next one harappan civilization this indus valley civilization this is one of the important civilization which we need to remember which we need to do till 1920s the relics of the civilization were found only in the indus valley region but later you can see it expanded to saraswati the larger belt the civilization 1920 21 harappan was discovered by the excavations of dr salini and r d benerji the remains of the civilization were first noticed in harappa therefore it is called harappan civilization i gave you a clear indication about harappa to tell you the geographical location ha harappa ravi punjab pakistan this is the geographical location of harappa but this is one of the important city but uh, the first uh, fact identified there the first uh, traces were found there because of which we call it as harappan civilization following the important uh, geographical facts of distribution of harappan civilization you can see 1400 settlements of civilization were discovered so far both in india and pakistan together 
So if you can see the geographical extent uh, to north south we have 1400 kilometers from uh, east to west we have 1600 kilometers. This is the vastness of this particular Indus Valley civilization. So you can clearly see parallelly the cultures are also there Chalcolithic culture we spoke about uh, till now OCP culture we spoke about in and around the Yamuna and Ganges Dog OCP culture we spoke about where uh, acre colored pottery different colored pottery identified than the other Chalcolithic culture. Then we have uh, Savalda culture in the lower Mahar Maharashtra region, Malwa culture upper Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh region. So Ahar culture right these are the parallel cultures which we spoke about and you can also see Rangapur in Gujarat. So these are the different Chalcolithic cultures we spoke about apart from that if you can see Alamgirpur is here one is Alamgirpur or uh, you can talk about uh, somewhere in uh, Baluchistan from this particular area to this particular area and from Daimabad from Daimabad till the Jammu and Kashmir till the till the upper valley upper Indus valley so this is where we have this Indus valley civilization we can say this is 1400 kilometer extent and this is 1600 kilometer extent all the malines are small <coughs> we'll try to identify the areas as i said uh, although in that uh, the pictures are not mentioned sukta jandar in baluchistan which is in pakistan now right sukta jandar to alangirpur in uttar pradesh and similarly manda in jammu and kashmir to daimabad in maharashtra so this is what we have this is 1400 this is 1600 this is the geographical extent we need to remember again remember sukta jandar in the baluchistan alangirpur in uttar pradesh daimabad in the south maharashtra and manda in jammu and kashmir this can be considered as the uh, boundaries this is how the boundaries are derived for this particular culture how many settlements as i said you just have to remember 1400 settlements were there and most of them are in india pakistan is also there but in 1920 understand india and pakistan are same the total geographical stretch of harappan civilization is uh, uh, bigger than any other civilization like egyptian civilization the contemporary civilizations right domestic contemporaries we saw internationally egyptian and mesopotamian civilizations are contemporaries but nowhere these are comparable to the civilization which existed in india if you try to see those uh, uh, imperial uh, historians they try to erase the history of all this from the memory of indians mostly harappan settlements are located on the banks of which only 40 settlements uh, were located in indus and its tributaries all other are in ganga that is the reason why we say it is a broad civilization ganges and saraswati civilization saraswati river system is also important but saraswati has no trace we can't see saraswati saraswati is flowing under the under the earth right that is how it is considered no proofs of it 250 settlements found in india are beyond saraswati river system a few located in Gujarat and Maharashtra also don't think that Indus Valley civilization is completely in and around Indus Valley civilization that is also there in Gangetic civilization Ganges that also came till uh, Narmada right Tapti the distribution pattern of settlement shows the focus of Harappan civilization was not the Indus but the Saraswati river and its tributaries which flowed between Indus and Ganga therefore few researchers call it as Saraswati civilization or Indus civilization, Indus Saraswati civilization. If you have to divide the civilization into categorizations, so you can divide it as small villages, larger towns and larger cities, right? Larger towns and small cities and similarly larger cities, this is how we can divide. The large settlements were 
we can understand religion where we can understand trade and commerce so the technology is this mohenjodaro harappa ganwariwala raki gari kalibangan and dolavira these are the major cities where by understanding the cities we can come to conclusions about most of the social and cultural facts so large cities when you talk about large cities were surrounded by vast agriculture lands rivers forests that were inhabited by scattering farming and pastoral communities and bands of hunters and food gatherers the same way now we have urban areas and rural areas we are considering the cultures then excavations at sites of mohenjodaro harappa kalibangan lothal charkutoda dolavera etc have given us fair idea about various aspects of town such as planning economy technology religion all these will come to our understanding once we analyze these cities so harappan town planning this is the first factor we'll speak about these are the facts we need to present in your mains answers also town planning first thing is town planning you are not talking about planning even now people construct houses without planning but now you are talking about town planning there are very less cities which were planned in india like chandigarh very less cities which were planned even now that is the reason why town planning is very important parameter the orientation of the streets and buildings how the buildings were constructed how the streets were there how the drainages are there how the waste is being managed in these particular urban areas this will give you broad understanding and we can say that this is urbanization or this is urban culture so urban culture then comes vedic culture which is rural culture again then again comes urban culture then again comes rural culture likewise it is like the phases urbanization ruralization urbanization ruralization so yeah so you can see when you see this uh, these are more down all the trees are more down clearly if you can see these cultures right so you see clear construction in the sites which are available and geometrical shapes are also found which led us to think that there is planning right so harappan cities including mohenjodaro harappa kalibangan sarkadoda which is in baluchistan which we saw as the boundary were sorry sarkadoda not sarkadoda sarkadoda were having large gateways at various entry points the way we have large gateways nowadays when you get into any particular city you have large gateways welcome to for example welcome to hyderabad welcome to guwahati welcome to tirupati welcome to vijayawada likewise at dolavura a fallen sign board is also found close to main gateway which is of size, very large size with the inscriptions approximately 30 77 cm high and 25 to 27 cm wide proclaimed some name title the way you use boards outside your home right the same way these boards were there and if you try to see the materials what are the materials being used from the first we focused on materials from neolithic age from paleolithic age we focused on materials if you try to see most of the settlements were situated in alluvial plains unlike the stone age right where it happened in hilly areas most common building materials were mud bricks but these mud bricks are kiln fired bricks clearly there is a kiln industry and wood is also used and reeds is also used unlike uh, unlike those chalcolithic culture where the roof is made of uh, made of uh, grass right made of some straw material right the roofs are made of the straw material like uh, we had in rural areas before even now rural areas are having pakka roofs kacha roof pakka roof if you remember huts we call it as right unlike the chalcolithic huts so where they have used the straw or any grass here we have roof uh, which is concreted based uh, supported by the wooden reams wooden reeds right
If you try to see areas in the foothills of islands of Kutch are in Saurashtra, dressed stone, replaced bricks. If you come to few areas in Saurashtra, if you go to Goa, you must have seen in Goa also, a kind of stone is available through which we can construct houses, right? So those things. The size of bricks have been found identical in proportions. One is to, two is to, four is the size, length, breadth, height. That the width is double the thickness and the length is four times the thickness, which clearly shows that geometrical picture clearly shows the manufacturing precise precision of the manufacturing. The size of the bricks have been found identical as I said. Doors and windows were made of wood and mats. Even now the windows are made of wood, right? Unlike the PVCs which came recently, until recently we used wood only. Floors of the houses were generally hard packed earth that was often plastered. As I said, this is plastered. The flooring of the house is clearly plastered. Drains and bathing areas were made of baked bricks and stone. So if you see the drainage facilities are drains where the water is flowing. So they have burned the brick very hard or they have used stone for complete drainage system, which is also plastered sometimes. Roofs were probably made of wooden beams covered with reeds and packed clay. As I said, this is completely, although cement is not available, clay is available. So they have made a, a kacha, a pakka roof when compared to Chalcolithic cultures. So these are the building materials, the different building materials. And uh, so by the type of uh, buildings, we will understand the kind of privacy they have, right? By the type of buildings, by the size of the buildings, we conclude the distribution of power. But we are not sure whether we are talking about a religious leader, we are not whether sure we are talking about a political leader, or we are not sure whether we are talking about any republic, right? Excavations have uncovered many types of houses and public buildings. One, the private culture and the public buildings, both small and large settlements. So architecture may be grouped into private houses where privacy matter, large houses surrounded by smaller units may be the center of power like the president house now we have the center of the power and the staff quarters around large public structures right public structures like mohenjo-daro the great bath or maybe granaries so if you can see so how we try to conclude that this urban is not only planning so the planning of the houses also doorways and windows rarely opened out into the main street. So normally, even now, the doorways and windows are not open to the main street to protect from the dust, to protect from uh, the other's sight. Privacy is important then, right? So privacy is the culture of urbanization again. So main street, but faced lanes, sub lanes they have faced. For example, if there is a big lane here, if there is, they have created sub lanes like this and you can say that windows are facing this particular area, this particular area, this particular area but not towards this, either main way, either main doors or windows are facing the main roads. The view into the house was blocked by a wall or a room around front door. So waiting hall or any room which will not give you clear insight of house, right? Unlike uh, in rural areas, when you try to see, you can see the hall kitchen also sometimes. This was done to protect activities of the central courtyard and the view of passers by. So they have a clear sense of that privacy, maybe, might be. The doors were made of wooden frames and uh, brick sockets were made of brick. So pivots are made of brick, no metal, right? Some of the doors seem to have been painted and possibly carved with simple ornamentation. So carving on these wooden sheets were there clearly and they were also painted. So windows were small at first and second stories, which means when you go to top, when you talk about second story, normally first floor, second floor, these will not be the feature of rural cultures normally. 
the adjacent the adjacent houses were separated by narrow space where it is called no man's land so these are the features where we speak about urbanization we compare that with the urban cultures now public buildings some large and distinct structures have been found in several designed specifically for public purpose maybe for uh, religious bathing maybe for prayer like different different public infrastructure is found so let us take an example great mohenjodaro this is the mohenjodaro the great bath of mohenjodaro we call it as if you can look into this clearly so let us understand this is a remarkable future this is the remarkable construction in any harappan site when you compare the great bath was a brick structure completely made of burnt brick which is measured 12 meters to 7 meters by 7 meters one side it is 12 meters the other side it is let us consider 12 and 7 meters and nearly 3 meters deep from the surrounding pavement so 3 meters depth 3 meters in depth when you are talking about depth 3 meters right so so this is like uh, any religious tanks we have we can compare with the religious tanks in the temples nowadays right and uh, this is and nearly 3 meters deep from the surrounding pavement so you can see you have a pavement so if you try to see the pavement we are trying to understand from this pavement which we have so it is almost 3 meters deep 3 meters deep one person can clearly take a complete dip into that one second so water was evidently so where the water is coming into this was evidently supplied from three large well placed in three large wells placed in adjacent room right so the water is being supplied from the well surrounded surrounding the bath there were porticos and sets of rooms which are while a staircase lead to an upper story so there are staircases which are available there are porticos and rooms which are available you can see the portico here and there are staircases which are leading to these particular rooms if you can see the right side you can clearly observe right and the orientation of the bricks also you can see one side it is horizontal one side it is vertical right it is completely engineered construction it looks like a completely engineered construction engineered means planning and implementation was there the bath was linked with some sort of ritual bathing which was very common in indian life in ancient times still did so whenever you go to temple it is your habit to wash your hands face or you go after bathing normally so wherever whichever temple you visit there are tanks religion tank, those tanks are there right so immediately to the west of the great bath at mohenjodaro was a group of 27 blocks of brick work criss crossed by narrow lanes this structure measures 50 meters east west and 27 meters north south so 27 meters and 50 meters these structures have been identified as granaries which were used for storing grains similar structures are also found in kalibangan lothal harappa although the great bath is not available but the granaries and the structures of granaries were available so you can see this one okay the granary side by side the dockyard found in lothal when you go to lothal lothal we had a dockyard right this might be the place where we have traded with uh, uh, other civilization was another important structure it was large structure measuring 223 meters in length and 35 meters in width and 8 meters in depth provided with an inlet channel in the eastern wall and a spillway so which we can understand that uh, 
they might have water connectivity, water lane connectivity to Lothal. Okay. The inlet channel was connected to a river by its side and it was 250 meters long and 21.6 meters wide wharf. This, this was a dockyard where ships and boats used to come for loading and unloading trading of goods. That is the reason why we can conclude that Lothar is one of the important trading center for Indus Valley civilization. So you can see the video. The well which is connecting to the great bath. And a channel to discharge water. See the depth, 3 meters deep, although in pictures it, is, it was not revealing. So you can see that the depth is 3 meters clearly here. And the height also you can understand, because the images which we took are little satellite in nature. So you can see the crisscrossed structures where we consider the mass granaries. And this is the mound, clearly big mound, Mohenjo-daro. So these are the different porticos and uh, uh, maybe rooms for changing. You can see clearly the tank ground is also pasted to protect the percolation. So there is a stairway down to the path, there are clearly the porticos. So you can see the staircase into that pool, maybe we can call it as the great pool, greater pool. Maybe this is used by religious purpose or maybe for uh, political people, maybe for religious heads or maybe for public, but uh, we consider it as a public building. So you can see the bricks crisscrossed clearly, the kind of arrangement of bricks and the orientation clearly says and the pasting material between the bricks is also important, brick and mortar the mud paste, the clay which they have used. So these are the wells we can see and we can see the bathrooms. The drainage, the passways, you know, you can clearly see how these bricks were arranged.
so coming to streets and drains the most outstanding feature of harappan civilization were the streets outside the lanes which equipped drainage system the drainage system is clear and you can see the drainage system these also the smaller drain the smaller drains connected the houses to the street drain the street drains connected to the greater drains complete drainage system is available so you can clearly see even the, the drain floor is also pasted not concreted like now no concept of cement but clearly pasted a plaster is used a kind of plaster made with a brick mortar right the street cut each other at the right angles all the streets cut right angles and the width of these streets was in the set ratio so smaller lanes bigger lanes all these were in set ratio no encroachments in the streets can be seen unlike what we see now even smaller towns and villages had impressive drainage system this is not limited to urban areas so in indus valley the rural areas also uh, had a, a very good drainage system because we may conclude that is a urban culture this indicates that people had a great sense of uh, sanitation hygiene civicness health bond bricks were used to make drains small drains connected with bathing platforms and latrines in the private houses were joined with medium sized drains small drains to medium drains and these drains ran into larger sewers in the main streets which were covered with uh, bricks or dressed by stone blocks even now is in most of the municipalities drainages are not there and most of the times drainages are not there and if there they are not covered so even the drainages even the sewers were covered so i hope you, you understood till there clearly harappan crafts and industry now we are coming to crafts and industry this revised as bronze civilization as i said uh, copper alloys are used copper mixed with a tin is used this is called bronze culture harappan tools weapons were simple in form they comprised the flat axes chisels arrow heads spear heads knives saws razors and fish hooks so you can see the tools and implements here people are also made copper and bronze vessels copper already available as i said in chalcolithic time period they made small plates and weights of lead and gold and silver jewelry of considerable sophistication so weights and measure system is also their system of weights and measures the harappan continued to use knives of chered blades further a great skill and expertise have been seen in precious and semi precious beds and weights the small weights so precious stones are also used in weights which may we, we which may we, we distinguish from common man to a good trader long barrel shaped carnelian beds of 10 cm long are finest examples of craftsmanship so skill engineering can be seen here there are n number of seals which were found in this particular soil steatite is used in most of them seals beds bracelets buttons vessels most of them steatite was the raw material but its use in making a fiends a form of glass is particularly noteworthy so a glass like structures were made with a raw material steatite the gold objects found in the form of beds pendants amulets brooches and other small ornaments in harappan civilization so what we have 
we have gold, we have silver, we have bronze, we have copper, we are using chert, we are using stateite. Mature Harappan pottery represents a blend of ceramic tradition and pre-Harappan cultures in the Indus Valley and Saraswati. As I said, pre-Harappan culture, you can say Chalcolithic culture, I said a ceramic culture. Pottery technology was quite advanced, most of the parts were wheel made, so you can see the wheel, the introduction of wheel which changed the phase of life. Big storage jars were also produced, parts were beautifully painted in black on the bright red surface with the geometric designs, plants, animals, few painted seem to depict the scenes from stories. As we see, the regular life is being depicted, the way we have uh, movies now, the way we have movies, storage devices, this pottery is revealing the culture and social life of those times clearly. The designs, the designs clearly saying about that. The motifs on this particular pottery clearly establishing the socio-cultural life of those times, right? More than 2500 seals were found, so maybe for uh, trade, maybe for political dictation, maybe for orders. They mostly depict single animal, unicorn, bull, elephant, rhinoceros, but some also depict uh, trees, semi-human, human figure in some cases participating in a ceremony. Shells also uh, working, Lothal, there are places which are in coastal area. Shell working was another flourishing industry. Artisans, settlements close to the sea manufactured shell ornaments like pendants, ring, bracelets, inlays, beads, etc. Decides the bowls, lids and gamesmen. So coming to trade and commerce, so we spoke about steatite, we spoke about chert, we spoke about uh, shells, we spoke about copper, silver, bronze, gold, right? So the usage of all these was there and we can understand the industry was thriving when compared to the previous times or pre-Harappan cultures. Trade and commerce. Intensive agriculture production and large scale trade played a significant role in flourishing Harappan culture. So, urban areas, trade is important. The elegant social structure and standard of living must have been achieved by highly developed communication and a strong economy. So, highly developed communication with other civilizations like uh, uh, we saw Roman civilization, maybe Mesopotamian civilization, right? Not Roman, Greek, Mes Egyptian, Mesopotamian, Roman, all these are later. Egyptian, Mesopotamian. The trade must have been internal in the meaning that is between one zone to another zone and also external. Agriculture produced industrial raw materials like copper ores, stone, I spoke about different stones, semi-precious cells, etc. were traded on larger scales. Besides those raw material which were used, the finished goods were also traded the GDP of Indus Valley civilization. <laughs> One fine day, someone will calculate GB, GDP of IBC. <laughs> right? Finished products of metals, which are parts, pans, weapons, etc. Precious and uh, semi-precious stones, ornaments of gold, silver, etc. were found. They are procured, if you can try to see the source, even in the Chalcolithic times, copper was procured from K3, somewhere in Uttarakhand and sometimes in Uttar Pradesh. Copper from K3 mines in Rajasthan. Chert blades from Rohri Hills in Sindh. Chert is being used from Stone Age. Carnelian blades from Gujarat and Sindh. Lead from South India. Lapis lazuli, as I said, uh, is a stone normally, which is from Afghanistan. Beds of made of lapis lazuli stone is also used. Right, a kind of blue color, turquoise, a kind of turquoise color maybe, turquoise and jade from Central Asia or Iran, amethyst from Maharashtra, agate, chalcedony and carnelian from Saurastra. These are the raw materials and the sources of uh, mining industry.
So to conclude, as I said, with the to understand the context, the occurrence of mature Harappan seals and other Arctic crafts in contemporary Mesopotamian civilization and other Mesopotamian and Egyptian objects in Harappan civilization is an evidence of trade and relationship with each other. As I said, internal trade is there, external trade is there clearly. So it seems to be strong economy, strong society with strong economy and uh, strong cultures. But this is in proto-history. The kind, uh, although we have many ex excavations, the script they have is uh, Indus script, we call it as, or we call it as Bostrophedon, or we call it as snake script, because the script is like this. <coughs> I'm sorry. Left to right, right to left, left to right, because of which uh, this is proto history. Although the script is there, although the image script is there, we are unable to decode it because of which we call it as proto history. The trade requires weights and measures. The next topic the trade requires regulation of exchange and weights and measures. If it is in the modern times, we have FKS system, FPS system, MKS system, FPS system, you must have read in intermediate the standard weights, right? If you talk about uh, the length, somewhere we talk about in kilometers, some places we talk about in miles. Somehow we have arrived at a standard in the modern world, but uh, the system of exchange and the yardstick is very important there. Harappan weights and measures were cubical and spherical in shape, were made of chert, jasper and agate. Steatite for seals and you can see chert, jasper and agate for measure, measures, right? Weights, the small weights, small weights to big weights. You can see weights in a regular ration shop which is made of iron. And if you go back to any gold jewelry, these are made of uh, some precious stones, sometimes lead also. The system of weights preceded a series, proceeded in series for doubling 1, 2, 4, 8, 2, 64, then going to 160. The decibel multiples of 16, 320, 640, 1600, 6400, all these multiples are also there, which clearly gives an idea that they have good understanding about mathematics, right? The tradition of 16 are its multiples continued in India till 1950s. 16 are Chatang made a share. Even now, if you talk to your grandparents, they will talk about share, right? Share a ball. People used to bring a big uh, share ball are equivalent to 1 kilo and 16 anas made 1 rupee. So these are the examples for you to understand the system of 16 is used. Now the system of decimals is used 1 to 10. The measure of length uh, was based on upon a foot of 37.6 centimeters and a cubit which is 51.8 to 53.6 centimeters the add stick is different. The scales which you have is 1 to 30 centimeters, consider they had 37.6 centimeters. Then if you talk about transport and travel in uh, Indus Valley civilization, that is Harappan civilization. Pictures of ships and boats found on some seals and drawings of pottery from Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. As I said, we are trying to see through the pottery. Pottery is important. Evolution of pottery is important. Black pottery, red pottery, acre colored pottery, painted greyware. All these are important because by seeing that, we are trying to understand the cultures of those times. So you cannot ignore which pottery existed in which timeline. Ship or boat with a stick impressed socket of mast has been found in Lothal. So a ship or a small boat with a stick impressed socket of a mast, a kind of flag maybe found in Lothal, so which is uh, a coastal city. The boats depicted on seals and pottery resembles the boats used in Sindh and Punjab areas even today. For land transport, bullock carts and pack of animals like bullock, bulls, camels, ass were used. 
the terracotta models of the terracotta model, the bond to clay model, which uh, we used to play in our childhood, terracotta models of bullock cart found on roads from various sites indicate that carts used in those days were of same size and shape used in the present day. The bullock carts, which is used for local transport, ships used for international transport. Coming to the culture of this particular period, a large variety of objects such as seals, stone, statues, terracotta are examples of art activity. A yogi from Mohenjo-daro and two small figurines in Harappa are most outstanding pieces of art are the dancing girl in Mohenjo-daro which is of 11.5 meters height, 11.5 meters, 11.5 centimeters height made up of bronze found in Mohenjo-daro. So the dancing girl. So why we are calling her as a dancing girl? Why we are looking her as a dancing girl? You can see this woman is in Tribanga pose. Tribanga pose. Tribanga pose. And uh, the kind she is holding one hand on the knee and the other one on the waist. The bun she had. The face craft, right? The makeup and the craft. The beads which are being used beads or bangles, the kind of ornament she is wearing, all these are making us to believe that she is a dancing girl. So which means that there must be a form of entertainment also, the kind of dances we have now. So it is made of bronze. So bronze is dominating, we call it as bronze culture. But iron is not yet here in the picture. When the iron comes, the scene is different because the implements which are made of copper and uh, bronze are not robust, iron is robust. Iron can mow the land, iron implements have the capacity to clear the forest and uh, this has the capacity to kill people or kill you know animals, domesticate animals. So this is very robust metal, right? Daimabad bronze animals workmanship most likely belong to Harappan period. The red sandstone torso found in Harappa made of a detachable limbs and head, detachable limbs and head, head can be detached and limbs can be detached, the torso, the back side part of a particular person, right? red sandstone which is made of red sandstone, it is very important for you to understand, Lal Killa you call it as red fort, so red fort in Agra, red fort in Delhi, all these are made of red sandstone. So, for your understanding, the grey stone torso, perhaps normally in Gandhara culture or Afghanistan, we see grey sandstone. Grey stone torso perhaps illustrate a dancing figure. Both of these are realistic that none would believe that they belong to the Harappan period. No one will accept that these existed in, the, in those times. Harappan people produced a large number of terracotta figurines which were handmade. The figurines include humans, animals, birds and monkeys. So likewise many were found. So there is another important one, a, a, man, a bearded man, you can also look for a bearded man. So different art like bronze statues, dan dancing girl. So what we are trying to see is example with diversity. One bronze statue, which is a dancing girl from Mohenjo-daro, terracotta bulls, which, was made, which were made of burnt clay, bond brick, terracotta female figurine, head of a yogi, painted jar, dogs, sheep and cattle. The most artistic depictions are figurines of humped bull. So you can see the figurines of a humped bull. Figurines of both humped and humpless bulls are found in excavations. We spoke about uh, bull culture even before. The painting was found only on pottery. Unfortunately, no wall paintings, right? No motifs found on walls. So we can see the script. The language of Harappan is still unknown, but some scholars connected to the Dravidian languages and others to Indo-Aryan or Sanskrit. 
So as I said, we call it as Bostrophedon, we call it as Indus script, we call it as Saraswati script, we call it as Snake script, right? So mostly pictorial script, if you can see, this is the script based on pictures. So you can see elephant is there. So somewhere you can see the pictures, they are trying to depict fish. So this is called pictorial script, Indus script. They are nearly 400 specimens of Harappan signs and seals and other me materials using copper, access pottery, which have inscriptions where the letters were found. As I said, steatite seals were there, copper were there, weights and measures were there. This script has 400 to 500 signs generally agreed that it is not an alphabetic form of writing. As I said, it is pictorial script. Then come to agriculture coming to agriculture. Agriculture was generally practiced along the river banks, mostly flooded during summer and monsoons. But if you see, this is the region where we don't see rainfall now because of monsoon. So these get rainfall during winter season during any western disturbances. If you see the Indus Valley region, these places, the monsoon winds will be dry. You will not get any monsoon rains normally. But we see the floods, we see the rich uh, rains during those times. Maybe climate change we can consider. The flood deposited every year fresh alluvial silt with highly productive, productivity highly fertile because no irrigation is required in those alluvium. The cultivated fields excavated at a Kali Bangan, Kali Bangan, Kali means black, Bangan means bangle, shows crisscross furrow marks indicating that two crops were grown simultaneously, intercropping was there. This method followed even today in Rajasthan, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh, etc. Kali Bangan, so the black bangles, right? So you can see the agriculture field found traces found in that particular area, the crisscrosses. The granaries are also found in Harappan, most of the cities granaries found, Harappan city suggests that cereals were produced in such large quantities, they also kept as reserves to face any future emergency. So they must have faced emergencies, they must have famous faced uh, maybe emergencies with climate or weather. The principal cereals were wheat and barley. Wheat and barley are the principal cereals. Rice was also known and was a favored grain. Remains of rice have been found in Gujarat and Haryana areas. So the same difference even now, the same diversity available even now. Six varieties of millets, ragi, kodon, sanwa, zohar are also cultivated along with peas and beans, other pulses. Fragments of cotton cloth found in Mohenjo-daro and other sites clearly says that cotton is also a crop, commercial crop which is used now. Cotton has been found in Mehargar at least 2000 years before the mature phase of the civilization, the oldest evidence of cotton in the world. This is the oldest evidence, Mehargar's oldest evidence which we have now, even before Indus Valley civilization, before the mature phase. Apart from that, we have uh, varieties of legumes, sesame and mustard, which cultivated wooden plow. See, wooden plow. Plow is coming into picture, agriculture technology, with copper and wooden plow share. So this is copper, not iron. When it comes with iron, the in intensity of agriculture will increase. Surplus agriculture will come into picture later. Terracotta models of the plow have been found in Mohanjadara and Banwali. Harvesting of crops would have been done with the copper sickles as well as stone blades crafted in wood, but not iron. Animals like sheep, goat, humped bull, buffalo, elephant, etc. have been depicted on seals and uh, these might be the animals which were domesticated in these regions. So similarly, in the same cities, we also found the skeletal remains of uh, animals like sheep, goat, bull, buffalo, elephant, camel, pig, dog, cat. So we can see that these co-lived 
with the regular civilization, domestication, settled form of life. Wild animals were hunted for food, bones of animals of spotted deer, sambar deer, hong deer, wild pig were also found in excavation. So they also had uh, birds and fishes as their staple diet. Bones of horses have been reported from Lothal and Sarkatada, Kalibangan and several other sites. Bones of horses. If horse is not domestic to this region, they might have traded. But we have the bones. Terracotta fragrance of horse have been found in Naushero and Lothal, but animal is not depicted on hills, on seals. So which we can understand may be imported. There are generally religion, we speak about Harappan religion. There are generally two aspects of Harappan religion, conceptual and ritualistic, philosophical and ritualistic. So one, we consider this picture, the mother goddess, worship of mother goddess, even in Salkolithic times, we speak about it. So mother goddess, when you talk about mother goddess, most of the villages have village goddesses. Most of the cities have goddesses even now. So this might be the source of this culture. Worship of a male deity, Lord Shiva, considered as Shiva, Pasapati. Worship of animals, nature, semi-human are there. Worship of trees in their natural state and their indwelling spirits like uh, Avatar movie. Worship of inanimate stones or other objects of Linga and Yoni symbol. So Linga and Yoni symbol. So reproductive cultures, Pallu cultures. Pallu culture. So Krimatheism as illustrated in the worship of sacred incense burners, what we do even now. Faith in amulets, charms, belief in spells, integrate demonophobia. So God and devil, the existence of devil, evil spirits they believed in. Practice of yoga. These characteristics suggest that the religion was mainly an indigenous growth and the lineal progenitor of Hinduism. So these are the elements of Hinduism also, right? A large number of female figurines of terracotta have been found. We consider that as mother goddess. A striking rectangle found, seal found in Harappa represents earth or mother goddess with a plant growing from her womb. So from her womb, from a woman womb, trees are growing, we consider her as mother earth. So this is called worshipping the nature, worshipping the nature, worshipping earth, worshipping uh, water, worshipping wind, worshipping sun, all these are called worshipping nature. We consider them as gods by themselves who are energizing, who are giving energy. So yeah. Striking rectangle seal found in Harappa represents the earth or mother goddess. A mild deity which is the depiction of Shiva or Pasupati, a prototype of historic Shiva. Portrayed in a seal with three faces, seated on a low throne in a typical posture of a yogi, right? So Padmasan, we can call it as, with two animals on each side, one elephant, the other one is tiger on the right, and the rhinoceros and buffalo on the left, and two deers standing under the throne. So we can see maybe. The power of domestication is the power of the people then. So might be it is depicting that they have domesticated all these animals. But sure, they have knowledge about these animals. When you talk about elephant, uh, you know, elephant, uh, domesticating elephant is not an easy task. So maybe we're talking about that power, right? Our inclusive living. Terracotta piece having Linga and Yona, Yoni in one piece found in Kalibangan people of Kalibangan region worshipped the symbolic representation of Shiva and Sakti. Not only uh, you can see those idols as I said Pasupati, apart from that idols we can also see Linga and Yoni. The remarkable seal found in Mohanjadaro standing between two branches of people tree represents a deity. Similarly many fire altars were found 
in Kalibangan, Lothal, Banwali, right? Swastika, the symbol swastika, a sacred symbol for Hindus, Buddhists, Jaina has been depicted on different sails, different graffiti or painting. A large terracotta figurines depict individuals in various yogic postures indicating that Arapans practiced yoga, Padmasana, different asanas they have practiced. So what is about social stratification in this particular time period? It appears to be divided into three sections. One elite class who lived in citadel, the walled city. A well-to-do middle class, maybe traders. A relatively weaker section which were uh, who were occupying the lower town, maybe farmers or the laborers. The craftsmen and laborers normally were resided outside fortified area nearer to the industry. It is however difficult to say whether these divisions were based on economic factors or social factors or religious factors, we are not sure. Kalibangan reference, it appears that the priests resided in upper part of the citadel and performed rituals in fire altars. So the excavations in Kalibangan may be connecting to that fact that these divisions may be of religion, a religious division maybe. So if you try to understand the political setup, what kind of pro political setup we cannot ascertain. The entire area of Indus Empire was administered from one capital with a few regional administrative centers and provincial centers maybe. There were several independent states or kingdoms like Mohenjo-daro, Sindh, Harappa, Punjab, Kalibangan, Lothal in Gujarat, etc. So the area later divided into 16 Mahajanapadas, each with independent own capital, we call them Republic, right? Later, during 1000 BC. So disposal of the dead and if there is any religion or social factors are understanding that. Scattered burials as well as a discrete cemeteries have been found in major sites. Scattered, those are not centered in one place. The skeletal remains are in few in comparison to the size of settlements and population that may have lived on them. So the sheer size of this particular construction and the kind of skeletal remains which we got is not comparable. The general practice that skeletons were placed in extended position with the head towards north even now this is the practice, head extended towards north and this is in uh, Skeletons are in extended position, like uh, normally what we call is anatomical position. Earthen parts containing food grains, so they believed in a travel life after death, so food grains were placed in the grave and in some cases the body was buried with ornaments. So maybe they are uh, making them ready for a life after death or to bribe Yama or to bribe all those goddess or devils, maybe. Cremation was also practiced, cremation also practiced not only burials, which has been proved in many cindery aunts because small parts where we, where we keep those, you know, remains, skeletal remains. Uh, other receptacles containing calcined human bones and ashes together in the visual offerings for the use of dead person in the next life. You're right. So yeah, if you try to see the chronology, Marshall suggests that this flourished between 3250 to 2750 BC. Wheeler dated it as 2500 to 1500 which I remember, <coughs> which I reproduced. According to Wheeler, it is 2500 to 1500 BC. C14, carbon dating. According to carbon dating, we divide it into early, mature, late Harappan phase. So this is how the division is, 3500 to 2600, 2600 to 1900. 1900 to 1300. Maybe initial times we had contemporary with Stone Ages and Chalcolithic Ages. 
and they later had contemporaries with Mahajan Vadas and the republics. <coughs> so John Marshall, very important personality, General, Director General of Archaeological Survey of India, Asiatic Society, Asiatic Society is one, Archaeological Survey is another one, declares that Harappan civilization declined due to environmental degradation. The cutting of forests for agriculture land and timber for fuel and war exploitation of resources resulted in land barren and silting of rivers. Maybe this. <coughs> or maybe flood, or maybe drought, or famine. Wheeler opined that this is destroyed by barbarian Aryans who established Vedic civilization later. Archaeological or biological evidence proved that Wheeler's thesis of Aryan as a destroyer of Harappan civilization was a myth. It could not be proved because as I said, <coughs> no skeletal remains were available. The Harappan civilization was spread in large area, river Saraswati, river Indus. Now if you see these areas, there is no rainfall in general. Maybe this is more relevant to understand. Even now the monsoon winds are dry in these regions. So no rainfall to that region. So maybe that is acceptable to say environmental degradation, degradation except especially lack of rainfall and lack of water, drought famine. With the declining economic conditions, all other institutions like trade and commerce, administrative political structures, civic, everything declined over time. And uh, this evidence shows that Harappan civilization, like it, didn't disappear. The decline was gradual and slow. Almost 600 years we are talking about. Town planning, grid patterns, drainage system, standard weights and measures slowly disappeared. And a kind of realization takes place with distinctive regional variations. So different regional variations were found later. So Stone Age. In Stone Age, Paleolithic, in Paleolithic, Lower, Middle, Upper, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic, IVC. Then comes Vedic Civilization. So introduction of history. From introduction of history, all this we have covered. So we will try to cover Vedic civilization also after taking a brief time period gap. So if you have any doubt, don't keep any doubts. There is no point in keeping doubts. Go to the exam. Complete the syllabus very fast. Go to the exam. Write the exams better. Come back. Revise it. Revise it fairly, comprehensively. Rather than getting into one topic in depth, revise it comprehensively. More comprehensiveness, more your multidisciplinary approach. Right? So yeah, we will continue with the next session. Thank you.